Hi, good evening, guys. Welcome to Business and Leadership Forum with Uchi on Uchi this evening. I want to specially um, salute all our Christian brothers and sisters all over the world celebrating. I believe this is their Idel Kabir. Um, if, uh, if it's not, forgive me, but I want to believe that it is. I just want to wish you guys happy holidays, happy celebration. I know that a lot of ram meat is going around. I just wish you guys well. And, um, I, and since we're on holiday, I just want you guys to just relax. And let's talk about the power of focus. The power of focus. I taught this at a particular... Um, I taught this uh, the first time... Well, I can't remember it was the first time, but I have um, talked about a gathering. I talked about this power of focus. And there was this man that was so moved and, you know, he was elderly and he was so moved. He came and said, look, I understood this in my early 60s. Yeah, I think that was what he said. I understood the power of focus in my early 60s. And, he's, and he felt that... Um, he said that he thought being a good, able to juggle many things at once um, was a skill that he took pride in. And he, was, he now realized that he wasn't able to do much. You will, you will understand that at the end of um, this presentation, why he made um, that statement. It's just because we don't understand the power of focus. Focus is very, very important. We need to understand um, focus. Focus helps us to achieve. Um, focus helps us to achieve the things that we want to achieve. Okay. So this evening, um, I'm just going to take you to this presentation. And what this presentation offers us is basically three things. Um, we will understand what focus is. Um, we understand why it matters and how to become more focus these are the things that we are going to understand in this we're going to understand in this presentation so let's talk about focus and success um, how they go together how they are in interwoven now how they are how they are linked um, success focus because there can be no success without focus there's this guy called student student's law um, Stugion says, um, I'm sure he's a popular guy, he has a law, and he said 90% 90, 90 of everything is crap. That is his law. He says 90% of everything is crap. Crap means rubbish. 90% um, of things generally, they are, they are not important. I believe that is his own way of putting it. 90% of everything is crap. It's student's law. You might think maybe I'm just saying it. Um, a word I would not normally say, but uh, but that is his law. Um, you can look at look 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 up um, that law. You will see. Then this Pareto principle. I'm sure we we've heard of this Pareto principle. Says that 80 percent of results come from 20 percent of action. In everything that you do, even in every organization. 20% um, of people are the ones that do 80% of the job. And even in churches, in giving, in organizations, in associations, in homes, in families, 20% are the ones that give 80% of what is required. It's a natural law. They're tried and tested over and over um, again. So both students' law and Pareto um, principle what do they emphasize? They emphasize focusing on what is important and valuable um, over uh, and valuable over everything else. Mm. So it is it's about it is about making decisions, and we'll see how we can make decisions that can help us. Um, most likely, most highly successful people um, in history have been focus specialists. Most successful people in history has been focus um, specialists. And let me give you an example of like three of them. The first one is Einstein. We know Einstein. And Einstein was focused on phys in physics, um, was focused on physics 
We all know the richest man, Elon Musk, is focused on technology and Shakespeare, Shakespeare was focused on writing, you know. And so I'll let you see some quotes from some, of, some guys that can help us um, to understand how highly successful people, you know, you see the thing with highly successful people, you will know them with one thing and not many things. They might have many products, offer many services, but their story and their focus is on one thing. And one thing per time. It's just that it is manifesting in different ways, but their message is the same thing. It's just like a speaker. Most speakers, they, they, all they speak, they have a message. So they are giving you different versions of their message. That is all they do. So because they are focused on one thing. If you listen to me, you will hear that I'm also focused on one thing. But I will give you the assignment. By the time you listen to me two, three times, you will always come to the conclusion of what I am and what I represent. Because it's in everything that I say. Okay, let's look at quotes from Warren Buffett. Let's look at quotes from Alexander Graham Bell. And also quotes from Thomas Edison to help us understand focus more. Yeah, Warren Buffett says um, the difference between successful people and really successful people is that really successful people say no to almost everything. This is Warren Buffett. He said success, highly successful people are the people that have learned to say no to almost everything. Why? They don't want to be distracted. Don't come and give me Warren Buffett. I know him for investment. So he's not bothering himself to be CEO of companies. He has a lot of companies, but he has CEOs. I think I read about him in one of his books. He says at the beginning of the year, he will give a target to the people, the MDs that run his company. And so those MDs, he gives them a target, you know, for the year. And that's all. He's not concentrating, he's not, he's not running companies. Some people are supposed to be great investors, but they are running companies. More interested in earning than, than utilizing what they have earned. Warren Buffett understood that investment was his thing, so he gets people to earn for him or invest in things that are earning for him and he will now uh, finish up with investment and he says success highly successful people are people that have learned to say no if you don't know how to say no hmm, you might not become highly successful because a lot of things will drag you down a lot of people will be dragging you down. A lot of people will be making requests, you know, and you can't keep all, all of it. A lot of people will be bringing business ideas and bringing things to you, you know, because people bring a lot of business ideas to me. And I say, look, I'm not, I teach people business. I bring concept. I'm a consultant. I can help you. I, I don't bring a business and say let me become a partner let me invest that is not I'm not saying all these things so that I can become a shareholder in your company no that's not what I'm saying and people always um, mistake me for someone that is looking invest looking for uh, opportunity to invest in companies I'm not looking for opportunities to invest in companies um, that's that's not what I'm looking for that's not the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing, my business is to make sure that I groom and train and release room and release highly successful people, not necessarily investing in their businesses. But do I invest in businesses? Of course I do. But it's not what I set out to do. So I have learned to say no, 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 you know, because um, what I do, people can mistake it um, for a lot of things. But I have a presentation for you. If you can say, if you don't know how to say no, just go to my um, my online store. It's uchonoche.com. Um, go to the online store. There's a presentation I want to believe that is there. Um, you can get it from my online store, 
or if you go through my um, my YouTube channel I don't know if it's there or if it's still there um, if it's not there you check the online store but if it's there you can get my teaching on how to say no it will help you because highly successful people are people that have learned how to say no let us look at what uh, Alec Alexandra um, Graham Bell says about focus he says concentrate all your thoughts on the work at hand the sun's rays do do not burn until brought to a focus if you take a magnifying glass and you go outside in the sun and you are able to put that magnifying glass at an angle and print a sheet of paper long enough that sheet of paper is going to ignite it's going to start burning so that is what he's saying the sun's rays they do not burn until they are narrowed down they are focused to a particular thing that is inflammable and the paper is inflammable after a while it will burn and he's saying that the same thing happens with concentrating all your thoughts on the work at hand that is the only way you can become highly successful you think you eat you breathe you talk you play all around that thing you want to achieve nothing will stop you from becoming highly um, successful thomas edison says the only trouble is that they do it against about a great number of things and i do it about one Thomas Edison says that people that are not highly successful, they do a lot of things, you know, surrounded by many things, but he does just one thing. If they took their time in question and apply it in one direction to one object, they will succeed. This is the advice from highly successful people that are long dead, but we're still talking about them even in this century because they were highly successful i know if i say solomon from the bible a lot of people will take what solomon said very seriously because he's been known to be um, the wisest man that ever lived the same these names are called are highly successful people and they are telling you this concerning focus don't do too many things Focus on one and you will be successful in that. Okay. What does it mean to be focused? Let's now begin to narrow it down. What does it mean to be focused? How focused someone is, is inversely proportional to how many activities they do. If you get this, you have gotten everything I'm going to say here today. If you get this, you are on your way to become highly successful. How focused someone is, is inversely proportional to how many activities they do. A person who is highly focused does few activities. I say it again, the, a person that is highly focused does fewer activities. Few activities. And consequently has a lot of focused time for each activity. You see? So you must have a lot of focused time on that thing you want to achieve. Because if you are doing too many things, you cannot be focused. You cannot be focused on one particular thing for too long. So an unfocused person, who is now an unfocused person, is one that does the opposite. While they have the same amount of time as someone that is focused, they will divide it among many activities. I will give you an example. And I will give you an example as I go on, because this is, we need to understand why focus is essential. And I've used this one to say that first of all, why we need to understand why we need to be uh, why we need to be focused in the first place. And this is what I'm trying to do 
Um, the reason why focus is essential is because there is simply not enough time in the world. We don't have more than 24 hours a day. God has made it so and no one can change it. We don't have more than 24 hours a day. God has made it so no one can change it. For example, there are, there are about 130 million books in the world. Now I'm giving you an example of what I said. I said why people are not successful is because they divide their time. And this is an example that I will give to you. I want to give you a series of examples. There are 130 million books in the world. If you read one book per, per week, then it will take you about 2 million years to read it all. If you read one book per time, per day, sorry, one book per week, which is the average time given to most serious readers to read a book. So if you read one book per week, it will take you 2 million years to read it, um, to read all the books. And we don't, the highest God gave to us is 120 years. So how do you now get to 2 million years? Nobody is around to be able to read all, that book, all those books. So what happens? Since time is a limited resource, we now need to be selective and filter out only the best or only the things that matter to us. Listen, time is a limited resource. You have to filter it out and find out the ones that suit you that are important for what you want to achieve, not because there are million books and you 130 million books, you want to read them all. Doing everything is not practical and is not wise. So you need to focus on making choices and eliminating unnecessary time wasters. Things that don't profit you. They might be important, but they, are not, they don't profit you. They are time wasters. It might be important to somebody else, but it's not important to you. And since it's not important to you, they are time wasters. And you don't have to waste your time um, with such things. Okay, so let's now see why focus is very important. Focus accelerates progress. Focus accelerates progress. How? By focusing and decreasing the number of activities you spend your time um, on, what happens is that you will make progress faster. If you concentrate on one thing, rather than concentrating on five things, you will make progress faster in becoming highly successful in that one thing than becoming not successful in five things. So, achieving excellence requires a large amount of time. To achieve excellence in anything, it requires a large amount of time. It takes about 10,000 hours, we've heard this before, of deliberate practice to achieve world-class performance in a skill or gain mastery, as, as they say. We've had 10,000 hours to gain mastery or to become a world-class performer. If you put 10,000 hours into something, you will be, you gain mastery at that thing. So watch this. If you were developing five skills and you spend one hour per day on each skill, it will take you about 1,000 days to become world-class in any of those five skills. That means it's going to take you about 27 years to be able to gain mastery in the five. But if you can concentrate um, if you if you can assert, to accelerate your progress, you can concentrate on one skill and take um, and, and, and put in five hours in that one skill. What will happen if you put in five hours in that one skill? This thing that you want to achieve to gain you can gain mastery in one of those skills in five years instead of wasting twenty seven years trying to gain mastery in five skills. You know, you know, we, we, we learn this as children 
we learned that um, don't be jack of all trade and master of none. It is true. When you try to learn everything, you will master none. And it's a wise, wise saying. When you learn, when you choose to do a lot of things, I want to know a lot of things. You know, there are people that pride themselves that they know everything. They want to know anything that is happening, they have a say. Anything that is happening around the world, they have a say. One guy will tell you, I'm, I'm the master of current affairs. I say in Nigeria, he said, no, around the world. And I said, why is it not better you choose Nigeria and one other country or maybe the U.S.? Why are you now want to be master of everything? The time you spend to gain information that you discuss with is not that you're even gaining information to sell information. You just want to pride yourself. I have this information. I can talk intelligently in all these areas. Is enough for you to concentrate one and you will gain mastery there's a way you can talk about a particular country if it's current affairs since i've said it let me use it you have current affairs in nigeria before you know it uh, media houses will begin to um, invite you and you will become a thought leader and before you know it this political um era in our country before you know it politicians can invite you to their cabinet, invite you to be their campaign, in their campaign team, invite you just because you are sound about the things that have to do with um, within our country or within your country. So which is better? Knowing about US, Australia, everywhere, all the continents about, but knowing uh, or knowing about your country. If it's current affairs, be current to what is happening politically uh, economically in this country, you'll be surprised. It happened to me. I just walk in and someone just said, please, we would like to invite you um, to our radio station, our TV station, come and speak at our TV station. I don't know them before. It's because they've heard. I concentrate on the things that we do. And yet, I concentrate on five things that are linked together. If I say five, I'm not concentrating on five things they are all linked together and i will say it marketplace apostle concentrates on five areas business leadership career development personal finance relationships and life issues and let me say you cannot business and leadership they go hand in hand and you can't talk about leadership you're not talking about the, if, and you're talking about the corporate world, you're going to talk about the, work, the workplace and people in the workplace. And personal finance is, uh, gave birth to um, how did it come? It came, it came about because you're working and you're realizing that you're working and you're not, you are not, you are not wealthy, you're not rich, but you're working and you're earning good salary, but um, you're not where you want, your, want to be. So you need to understand personal finance. So and also relationships, both personal, inter, um, um, uh, workplace relationship, interpersonal skills, the things that will make you a better person. You know how do I handle work and family? There's a lot of things that people are confused about um, in the workplace, in business, and all that. So this is what we do to help them. So it's not. Five different areas is about the person in the marketplace and the different aspects of that person in the marketplace. This is, this is what we do and this is how we've been able to zero it and narrow it down um, to these five key arms of marketplace apostle. So if I, if I wanted to now do it and with, with other areas of my interest, I, I like history a lot medieval history i like history i i there are a lot of things i love but i can't do it because this is my passion i have to follow this so that i can become putting my ten thousand hours which i feel i have uh, because this is many years almost 20 if not above 20 years i believe that i've done my ten thousand hours 
on this particular thing and this is what I think and breathe everything to have to do in this five core areas. But let me go back. Um, let me go back. So instead of wasting 25 years, uh, you can just use five years to gain mastery. A person, another example, a person reading 100 books, um, a person reading 100 books and 100 pages per day, do you know what will happen? He can only read one page a day for each of the books. So you line up 100 books and you say, I'm going to read 100 pages per day. You can only read one page per day. But, but look at this. If you read only one um, book, if you read only one book and read 100 pages uh, per day, then you will make 100 pages of progress per day, per book per day. So what am I saying? Select what you want. Instead of doing one, one page in 100 books, why don't you do 100 pages in one book in that your area of specialization or area of interest so that you can become a top leader faster in that area than in all areas. If you want to make progress as fast as possible on, on a goal, uh, focus on eliminating less important goals things that are not that important to you okay another second point i want to talk about uh, about focus is focus on activities with exponential return listen you have to be selfish about your destiny and you have to be mindful about your earnings so you concentrate on the things that are more important to you than things People might think that are important to you. Concentrate on the things that give you more return. Because life is investment. You have to invest your time in things that come back to you a hundredfold. Many activities have exponential return. You know, while doubling the input effort um, in more than in more than in more than doubles the return. What I'm saying is that when you double um, your effort. When you double your effort, you get more returns. This kind of activities, concentrate on activities that give you more return. Example, look at this now. The average football player earns, let's say, roughly about five, half a million dollars um, per annum. Whereas we have Cristiano Ronaldo earns about $35 million per year. Does it mean he works 70 times more than people in Premier League? Um, no, but he works at least twice as hard. That guy, uh, there was an analogy, I don't know if it's true, uh, but somebody was analyzing both of them and he said, Messi is a natural talent. Um, he's a natural talent. He doesn't need to put in as much as Ronaldo. Ronaldo is someone where he is is because he's determined that that guy trains like mad after their regular training this guy is at it he works twice or three times more not 70 times more but he remains on the pitch he works as two or three times more that's why now that thing that he's doing when others are playing is bringing back that exponential uh, return back to him. You see, when we left university, me and my friends were looking at ourselves and in one, once in the mirror and we were abusing ourselves because the people, the people that came first class were not brighter than us. I remember the first one month we were in school um, and they did tests. Me and this, my friend, we were among the first five. So it means that if we decide to if we decide to put in more, we could have as well come out first class. But we decided to take other things on campus, more important than academics. That's why we came out with a tutu and not the first class. So you see that it is what, when you see somebody reading, is going to get faster, get there faster than you, is going to be more recognized faster than you, and is the end result was get a 
first class and they will get it because of that thing that that extra time they are put in concentrate on the things that will give you exponential return it helps it helps and that's what we see it in players and I, Ronaldo is somebody I admire a lot because he's somebody that knows what he wants and he's getting what he wants he's beyond talent now he's talented but he's beyond talent he has something he wants to prove to himself and he wants to achieve that's why he ends that much it's not a fluke highly successful people it's not a fluke they decided that they will be highly successful they decided that they will do this it's not a fluke they know exactly what they want to achieve and in doing it they might not know the exact amount um, that they will be earning or what will be coming in but they are saying, I need to earn, I need to do more than I should. Let me give you another um, example. Invest in your money. When you're earning and you're saving, so assuming now both of us are earning 100,000. Okay? We're earning 100,000. And we say, okay, we will put aside we will put aside um, we will put aside 10,000 naira and um, and see how it goes so at the end of the year 10,000 times 12 is what 120,000 so now the person that understands investment can use that 120,000 and continue to put it in whatever investment opportunity that comes and is growing that 120,000 120, naira um, by the opportunities that come. But the other guy is just saving. And once you're just saving, you're doing nothing with that money. A problem or something will come and take that thing away. I have a friend that is highly, is, is a very rich man, I know. But he doesn't have cash. He never has. He, he says he's... Is 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 allergic to having money. He doesn't have more than he doesn't have more than hundred thousand, two hundred thousand per time. As in, because any money that comes, he's putting it to something to earn. So you now see that investing in money that that will bring money is is better than to just investing and you have nothing. When you invest, save when you save money in the bank, what happens? Something will come for that money. But when you invest that money and something comes, that money is not there. And you know what? That thing will come and go. Some problems will come. You think they will kill you. They will not. They will come and they will go. Because that money is already put somewhere. And by the time that money is coming, is yielding another, bringing return on investment, that problem has gone. Because if you have no idea what to do with money, then... The world itself will generate something that will use that money. And that, that is what brings you exponential return. How about developing skills? How about developing skills in digital marketing? How about developing skills in things that can help you push your business online? E-commerce, we can't do without e-commerce. When you have skills in that, you know what? It will bring exponential um, it will bring exponential return back to you. How about learning a skill that you can have, can bring about additional uh, income to you than saying that, um, um, that saying, oh, I will just do one thing. You can do four things. You can have four, so we can have one major thing you're doing. I have three other sources of income that are not as stressful, passive income coming. So you must always, at any particular point in time, make sure you are doing the things that you are doing is going to have exponential return back to you, and not, and not, and not, and not, um, and not just um, having something, and not just having, um, just doing things and expecting that oh, no, not a problem. Things will turn out well. Okay. So how do I become more focus i will end with this how do i become more focused you can become more focused by doing what i've said one reducing the number of commitments you have so that more time and effort can be applied
to each commitment. You must reduce the number of activities. In a day, write out what do I do in a day. Write out all the things tonight when on your bed. Write out your daily activities. And find out which one of them, which one of them is important. I'll give you an example. Example, I, I do three key things in the morning. And I used to spend so much time. I get up in the morning, I have to meditate for about 30 minutes. I have to sit still and meditate about 30 minutes. Then I speak in tongues a, a lot, maybe about an hour a day. So I will do that, then I will pray, and I also have to exercise and do my 10,000 um, steps a day. So you see now that if I do all of them together, um, if I take one hour each or 30, 30 minutes each, it will become, before I know it, it will be like 10, 11, and that's when I'm leaving home, you know, but I need to leave home much, much earlier than that. So what do I do? I have to be able to combine most of them because I do it on a daily basis. I can meditate while I walk, before I sit. I sit. I still do that in the evenings. Um, I can just do that in the evening or just before I sleep. I can do that or I can do that now walking. I've learned how to do that and do all those things and put it in two hours while I'm walking and meditating i'm doing my ten thousand steps and i'm also i'm um, praying and speaking in tongues and doing all those things within that time so th these things were important and i realized that i have to do them all at once but i didn't i have to do them together because some things can work together so there were also other things that i was doing in the mornings that i now shifted to the evenings and um, I shifted to the evening, especially I, that I read. There are some things I read early in the morning. Now I've developed my how to read them in between tasks or read them in the evening just before I sleep. You have to find out time and make sure those things that give you that return. I have um, a Bible app and also have, um, I, I, there's a, what do they call it now? Um, it's like, um oh what name is it but i have i have something i read you know commentaries yes uh, bible commentaries that i read you know and i just read them usually is i read them first thing in the morning also read them at night so that i shifted to the night the last thing i do is to read those commentaries so that i will sleep i want to feed my subconscious mind so that my subconscious mind is dwelling on those things while I sleep. Why am I doing these things? These things bring exponential return back to me. As a speaker, I, I, need, to, I need to sow in those things so that they begin to brew on the inside of me and bring about an exponential return in terms of um, the things that I say. Um, things, words in season, things that edify, all those things that come out is because I sold something. And so I watch less. Um, two hours before I sleep, I don't like to watch television or watch a movie. or I don't want to sow anything that will not bring um, bountiful re uh, returns in consigning the things that I want and the things that I take important. This is just, by the way, one of the things I, I, I do. This is how to become focus try as much as possible that the things that you do you will focus on them remember what warren buffett says he said you need to start saying no to some activities they are good they are not bad but you need to say no and stick to the ones that are very very important you know so for you to be able to do this you need to do a lot of housekeeping you need to sort out your current um uh, commitments by importance and then eliminate those ones that are at the bottom the least the least important ones eliminate them because they are not going to bring about exponential return back to you okay a question that is helpful is to ask yourself you need to ask yourself 
if I have to spend my whole day on what then what will that be? Then, then you are getting closer to your goal. You are getting closer to the reason why you even alive in the first place. Uh, you know that is your top priority in life. When you ask yourself that question, uh, if I had to spend my whole day in one thing, what would that be? For me, uh, well, for me, I would rather read and get information. I I like to get information. And that is what I can I can because I know that that information helps me to do what I do on a daily basis. With this, you realize your goals. My goal and my purpose is grooming. And with this, it helps me to be able to, I need to get information. I need to make my, I have a highly analytical brain, so I need to feed it with things so it can, it can bring out things and ideas and I thoughts, you know, levels and dimensions of thoughts that are not common. It's because I'm training my mind to be in that way. So you have to focus. Um, uh, focus helps accelerate, accelerate progress on your goals, which is particularly useful, um, especially when they are um, important and urgent. So let me just summarize all that I have said. I've said many great people are highly focused. Great highly successful people are highly focused doing one thing is the most extreme level of focus why because you are eliminating distraction the things that slow you down in life from becoming that thing you ought to be is distractions you know social media um, all these things are distractions social media benefits a lot of people people earn from social media Others just look at it as just a social thing. But people, people earn from it. You know, I try as much as possible not to stay long on social media. I have people that run my social media handles, not me. Because I personally feel that if you're not earning on social media, it's a, it's a, it's a time waster. It's wasting your time, except you are earning from it. And even me, that I'm earning from it. I, I don't sit on it. I get people to do it for me so that I'll be able to learn and, um, and, and gather knowledge that I will keep bringing to people. There's a, there's a formula, uh, progress is equals to time um, multiplied by speed. Time times speed. And you can only work fast if you are concentrating. So increase your concentration to work faster. Concentrate on one thing concentrate on fewer things and you work faster. Focus accelerates progress. Cutting down the number of projects, activities, the things you're working on will, will, will make you increase, will give you enough time, will give you speed, and you will arrive at your destination faster than doing too many things at the same time. Focus on uh, um, activities that give you exponential return. I have said that. Um, to become more focused, do less, eliminate less important things in your life and do the things that you have put in that chart. Um, they are high up in your to-do list or your priority list. So try as much as possible. Um, to do this, you must have a clear goal. For this to work, you must have a clear goal. And when you choose that goal, try to eliminate anything that will make you carry undue, unnecessary weight upon yourself. Um, that weight is what slows people down and takes you a longer time to get there. I know in most cases, you might not even get there because a lot of distractions are weighing you down. There are good things. There are good distractions, not bad but they are weighing you down, you can't move fast, so you can't achieve that thing you want. And you, somewhere along the line, you can become frustrated and just abandon it um, all together. But that shouldn't be um, the case. That shouldn't be the case. So, power of focus um, is what I wanted to discuss with you guys here today. The power of focus. So thank you guys. It's always a delight. Thank you guys on Facebook 
Instagram and YouTube. Thank you, thank you guys. Always coming live with me 5 p.m. every Monday. I'm sharing one important thing in these five four areas: business, career, leadership, personal finance, and relationships and the uh, life issues um, that follow through this these areas. Uh, thank you guys for always. I I appreciate your coming. Thank you. I want to specially invite you on Wednesday, Wednesday 5 p.m. same time, um, uh, 5 p.m. Nigerian time or West African time same time. I want to invite you for my counseling corner. It's my counseling session um, by 5 p.m. How does it work? Sending a question uh, in these five core areas on life issues, and I will come by five for one hour to answer those questions. People sending questions from all over the world. People I don't know. All you just need to do is just put it out in my DM. This is a question that um, you have. It might be from the things that I discussed, or it can just be um, in anything that falls within these five categories. You can ask, and I will come live to, to answer them. Um, um, also, I can bring in people to come and also answer your questions uh, when the need arises. All right, so special invitation to you on Wednesday. Another invitation I want to um, send out to you today is the biggest invitation I will give to you this year. And that is the Make in Nigeria Exhibition and Conference 2022. It's holding on the 20th to the 25th of October this year. It's the largest business gathering in the South South and the Southeast of Nigeria. So it's something that you don't want to miss at all. It's a gathering of business enthusiasts SMEs, startups, retirees, government people, people from the corporate world, the marketplace generally will be there. Everybody will be there. It's where we all converge to network and find out what is happening. Uh, we run a TMG model. The TMG is our think, make, grow model. Think. If you don't have, if you are just a business enthusiast, come. We will teach you. By the time you go through our um, our conference for six for six days you will learn how you will come up with a business idea many people have I promise you that then also there if you have a business um, will think you uh, tell you how to make multiple streams of income um, how to make with the idea how to make it and also if you started if you have started a business how to make it scale you will see all of this at making Nigeria 2022. Um, so there are other side um, attractions that are awesome. One is a raffle draw. Uh, but you say, uh, we've heard of raffle draw before, nothing new. But I don't think you've heard of a raffle draw where you can win a land. I think that is not impossible. That is uh, probably has happened before, but is 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 not common. And we present it to you at making Nigeria this year. So with a small token of buying just one raffle draw, you can win a land, you can become a landowner in the city of Otaku. I think that that is awesome. Also, we have master classes where um, in six days, you will leave that place with, you will leave that place being able to start a business. That is the idea. You will start a business. You will learn how to start a business in just six days that's what we want um, to happen and also we have exhibition um, with a small token as well you can exhibit in this powerful gathering we gather more than 12,000 we've gathered 12,000 people before in the six days so you can imagine now we're coming back from COVID and we are coming angry because we haven't done a physical meeting in two years uh, so we are coming and, and we are coming live and so we're going to it's like three three uh, exhibitions and conference put together because we only did uh, virtual for the past two years because of COVID. but we're back so you can imagine the numbers that will be there it will be a great opportunity a great time for you to be able to sell whatever you want to sell so those of you that have things um, that you want to sell or a business or or a service that you want to uh, share with us that is opportunity um, please follow you will see the links 
um, they will put out the links. Just go, go to www.makeinnigeria.com www.makeinnigeria.com Just go to that website, you will see register. When you click register, you can see all that you can um, do there. And lastly, concerning Make in Nigeria, there's an entertainment area. And there you can get a lot of things. Food, the taste of potato, different kinds of cuisines that are going to be released there. Also entertainment area where you can do a lot of things. We're bringing a lot of people to be in that field. It's a field. Um, so there people can unwind, play games and do quite a lot. So we're opening up that, you know, to make people because when people come they usually don't want to go it's a whole day and so they will come to relax and so we give everybody opportunity to come into that place to have a good time don't you see it's it's going to be an awesome event and i'm inviting you make it a date 20th to 25th of october i hope to see you guys thank you for showing up um thank you for listening to me and staying all this while Thank you guys. God bless and have a good night for us. See you on Wednesday.